Okay, so we're gonna get started. Uh, so good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Pandemic Grant Assistance and Customized Training Grant Program. Uh, my name is Michael Anderson. I am with the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce and we're gonna be joined by Kathy Lubinsky. Uh, she's from the New York City Department of Small Business Services and she will discuss the Customized Training Grant Program. So the one thing I wanted to mention, the Pandemic Grant Assistance Program uh, if you're familiar with the chamber, this is something that we've been telling you guys about since it started in June, but there are two major changes to it, uh, which I will get to at the end. And it is really significant because it allows a lot more businesses to apply. So even if you think you might know the specifics, uh, definitely listen up at the end because things are different. And even if it doesn't qualify to you, you may know some other business owners that can definitely qualify now. So you know, like I said, we're going to get started. So we have the New York State COVID-19 Pandemic Small Business Recovery Grant Program. So just to let you know, this program was started in June to help businesses that obviously were affected with COVID-19 closures and a loss in, in revenue. So real quick, the way it works is in order to be eligible, you have to be a small business, a micro business, or a for-profit independent art and cultural organization. And I will get to what that is. Um, just to let you know real quick, small business, anything 100 or lesser employees, a micro business, 10 or less employees, and a for-profit independent arts and cultural organization. I think we're pretty much familiar with all that. So if you qualify, uh, you would fit in one of those categories. There are some businesses that are ineligible. Uh, here is the list. The main ones are really nonprofits and churches. And um, anyone that got a restaurant revitalization grant, so that was a big thing that helped a lot of restaurants. If you are a restaurant and you receive that grant, you would be ineligible. So those are two big ones, but there are another list. And again, at the end, I will be putting a link to this. This will be recorded. All this will be out there. So if you have any questions, my email will be there. You could definitely email me and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. So like I said, what's the big thing? Well, the one thing is they look at 2019 and 2020, they look at your gross receipts. Your gross receipts must be between $25,000 and $2.5 million. You must show a profit from 2019. A 2019 profit is $1 or more. So even if you made $5, you would be eligible for that. And the one thing, 2020, your business income return must be greater than your grants which we'll get into in the program. And the other big thing is you must show a 25% decrease in your revenue. They look at your gross receipts. So again, they will compare everything from 2019 to 2020 and look for that 25%. And another thing I wanted to mention is that you must be in business be on or before March 1st of 2019. Um, and that is a very strict deadline. I have spoken to some business owners who open their business right after. And unfortunately, they really don't make many hard exceptions. This is the rule. So that is one thing they want to do. If you go into apply, what are you going to need? Basically, 2019, 2020 income tax returns. They must be in a completed IRS form 4506C, which is requested by Lendistry. Just to let you know, Lendistry is the partner that is handling the applications, uh, not to be confused with the company Lending Tree. Uh, Lendistry, they're based out of California and they've been handling it. But again, this program is from Empire State Development. So this is only a New York State program. So you must have a business registered in New York State. It does not have to be Staten Island. It could be anywhere in New York State. Again, Jersey, Connecticut cannot qualify. Uh, another point, you must put your proof of business location. There's the list. You just need to put two of the following. Uh, most businesses would have that. You also must have a schedule of ownership. So any owners that you have that have 20% or more ownership of the business, um, you have a list there. It tells you exactly what you need. Uh, a proof of number of employees. Another thing is your proof of business organization. Again, you only have to supply one of these. Business license, business certificate, a CFO, just one would be fine. And then at the end, they want your W-9 or bank account information. And that would be for if you do get approved for the grant, what they would do is they would transfer the money into your account. Um, so that's very important. And that's more or less the, the gist of it. 
I think most people understand it. Again, it's a lot more information, but I don't want to take too much time. But there are a couple of things that you guys need should, should need to know. This program was started in June. There is no deadline for it because it is still ongoing. However, they are telling us to have people fill everything out as soon as possible. If you start with this application, you can go back to it at a later time. So if you do start putting documents in and then you realize, oh my God, I don't have this or I need to get it from my accountant, you can save your progress and go back to it at a certain time. Um, another important thing that you need to know is when you are submitting the documents, everything must be in a PDF form. So on one of them, they ask you for ID. A lot of people are using their driver's license, which is great, but it cannot be in a JPEG or a PNG. It must be transferred into a PDF. So that's one mistake that a lot of people are making, uh, but that's obviously very, very important. Um, and the two biggest things that I wanted to let everyone know about the changes is I had said that your gross receipts must be between 500,000 or 250 to about $2.5 million. When our new governor was sworn in on Monday, on Wednesday, that was a change that they made. It used to be 500,000. It is now $2.5 million if that is your, um, how much money you made. So they increased that five times the amount and they're trying to get as many more businesses to apply. So I know some businesses made more than $500,000 and they were ineligible, they didn't apply. Well, now it's $2.5 million. So that opens up the door for a lot more businesses. So if that includes you or you know someone that maybe didn't apply because of that, let them know that that number has changed. Another big exception, uh, PPP loans. A lot of our businesses apply for PPP loans, which is fine. With the PPP loans, um, it does not matter that you receive them. There were three rounds. Even if you received all three rounds, what they do is they look at the total amount of PP loans that you received. That number has now increased to $250,000. That number was $100,000. So again, they doubled that and a little bit more. So if you received PPP loans, one, two, or even all three, as long as your total does not exceed $250,000, you would definitely be eligible for it. So those are the two biggest changes. And with those changes, a lot more businesses are starting to get in. And again, this was changed about two weeks ago. So that's how I know that they're definitely still pushing out this program and they want more people to apply. So again, there is no deadline, but we ask you to do it as soon as possible. To let you know, the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce has been selected as one of the partners that work with businesses and the Empire of State Development and Lendistry on this application. We at the Chamber, myself included, we can help you with any questions or any problems that you run into. That's not an issue. If you decide you want to fill this out on your own, that's great. I believe when you start the initial application, the ninth question will ask you a referring agent. It's a drop down menu. Um, if you can select the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce. And this is important because if there is a problem with your application, they will try to call you, they will try to email you. And unfortunately, sometimes people get it in the spam, they don't recognize the number, they won't pick up. That's when they will contact us at the chamber because they'll see who the referring partner is. And then they'll contact us to say, hey, can you get in touch with this business and let them know that there's a problem with their application. And I have made many calls and emails about that. So if you wanna fill out the application, that's great. Make sure you put Staten Island Chamber of Commerce on the ninth question. If you want to start filling out, you run into any questions, problems, anything, um, my email will be at the end of this presentation. You can definitely email me and I will try to get back to you. So again, this is a program that the Chamber does to help all the businesses. Again, you do not have to be a Chamber member for this. This is any business of New York State. Um, another thing I wanted to get into real quick is a New York City Small Biz Open and Online Program. This is something that the Chamber is also participating with. We all know how important it is to have websites. A lot of businesses, I'm sure when you guys do Google searches on a business, you see that some of them don't even have websites and some of them don't know how to do it. It's hard, it's difficult, we understand. So last year, the New York City Small Business Resource Network was established. Because of that, each Chamber of Commerce received a small business specialist. Um, the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce received one. His name is Michael Bao. And he'll work with businesses. You sign up and he can help you with 
anything, marketing, um, any questions with, you know, leases, anything that you think a business might have a question with, uh, Mike can definitely help you out and we can go through there. The thing they're pushing on right now is this program called Open and Online. It's pretty simple. The Open and Online, it creates free quality websites, including e-commerce, and it could also help you improve your search engine optimization. This is completely free. This does not cost you anything. And like I said, all you need to do is go to the New York City. Um, this is a little bit of the application, pretty simple, but the New York City Small Business Resource Network, you will go to that application, put in your business. When you put Staten Island, it will automatically transfer information to Michael, being that he's from Staten Island. Say you're not from Staten Island, then you might be connected with somebody else. But again, that doesn't matter. You don't have to be in Staten Island for us to help you. So again, I will give you his email in a second. Just to let you know, if you have any questions on the grants, the grant program, there is the website. Um, it's nysmallbusinessrecovery.com. If you have any questions on the open and online or that resource network, that would be NYC Small Business Resource Network. Um, either way, if you have any questions with anything, again, my email address is right here. Again, I am Michael Anderson. I'm the content development specialist at the Chamber. My email is manderson Manderson at sichamber.com. And Michael Bao is pretty, same thing, mbao at sichamber.com. If you have any questions with anything with your business, even again, if you're not a Chamber member with this grant, it does not matter. We're helping every business. I've made phone calls to people in Buffalo and Westchester, you know, whoever we can help, we're, we're definitely trying to help. So if you have any questions, you can go to that website take down my email address, email me. Again, this webinar will be recorded. I can send you guys PDFs on the, the full grant program if that's what you're looking for. Um, so at this time, I'm just gonna take a quick pause just to see if there's anything, any questions that we have. Looking, I do not see any questions. So at this time, we're going to take a look at the customized training grant program. And at this time, I'm going to welcome in uh, Kathy uh, Lubinsky from SBS, the New York City Department of Small Business Services. And Kathy, it's on you. And uh, thank you for joining us. And thanks for the help. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Michael. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Kathy Lubinsky. I'm going to share a presentation with you today about the customized training grant offered by New York City's Department of Small Business Services. Um, it's a pretty lengthy, chunky program. It's an awesome program. As a former small business owner of New York City, I wish I had known about this program when I was a business owner. And I'm gonna break my presentation up into two parts. One is explaining about the grant, and the second, I'll stop for questions. And the second part will be about how we um, come up with the amount of the grant. So I'm gonna share my presentation now. All right, so from the small, this is welcome to the customized training grant. This is an information session. The information that I share with you today, uh, Staten Island Chamber of Commerce will send out the PDF. Um, so you can see, you can, you don't have to remember everything and there'll be contact information. The goal of this web webinar is for you to understand what a customized training grant is and also, I want to determine, I want to help you determine if it's a good fit for your business. We'll talk about who SBS is, what the grant is, is your business eligible, the customized training methods and types of courses and eligibility, how you will then apply for a grant, important dates around the application process. We'll take a quick pause for a Q&A, and then we'll discuss how we calculate the grant. Um, please note that at any point, um, we will, there's always someone at SBS and the customized training team to help and support you in your questions. And then this webinar is also offered once a month. So let's just start with who is SBS? Some of you, some of you may or may not be familiar with SBS. Um, SBS is uh, the what an is an awesome agency, and we help unlock the New York City, like New York City economic potential, 
connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, creating strong businesses, and try to build thriving neighborhoods. Um, so essentially, we help the people of New York, the business of New York, and the neighborhoods of New York. So we've been pretty busy during COVID, and I know that my coworkers and I have all been thrilled to kind of help our great city. So we'll get into the grant. So what is it? The customized training grant, it's meant to be one year. It's competitive, meaning we get a lot of applications. So we, that we have four evaluation points a year. It is reimbursable. So that means that a business has to lay out the money for training and you get reimbursed. And the grant itself can range from $30,000 to $400,000. And it's for New York City businesses only and it's delivered through employee training. So how does it work? There's like three main components that I wanna make sure you walk away with today. So the, we fund the grant um, to help you invest in your employees. And we, we cover a percentage of the training costs, which I'll get into at the second part of the presentation. But we also pay for additional things, which we'll also get into them. Um, at the end of the presentation. Two is we want, when you apply for this program, you actually identify challenges your business is going through, and then you let us know what trainings would help you and your business address these challenges and bring you, and help support, become competitive, thrive in the city, especially in this COVID era. And then third is because we are um, funding this, we hope that the return of investment, you are going to share some of that return with your employees via wage increases. So when I talked about business challenges, you in the application, you when you um, apply, you have to choose one to four of these business challenges. Is your did your business recently purchase equipment or software that you need training on? We don't cover the software, the equipment, but we do support the training costs of how to, how to use that equipment or software. Is your business offering new services or products to reach new markets? And is are you trying to promote or give staff, your current staff, new skills to advance within your company? Or do you need to help your staff obsolete, uh, get updated skills on obsolete? Like they're, the, 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 what they're doing right now is just in the past, it's archaic and you need to up your, um, your operation so you can remain competitive in this digital world. And then how does this benefit? So those challenges that we just went over, you'll, you'll call them out. And then what are the, what are the, why would you do this? What, how have we seen the benefits? None of the benefits that we see that it impacts a business's bottom line. It helps reduce employee turnover by creating good morale. Um, also promotes an efficient and productive workplace. It takes away some of the redundancies and makes some of the workflow easier. And then the goal is to increase your competitiveness in the marketplace. So who is eligible? What makes a business eligible for a customized training grant? A business must is eligible if you're able to pay for the training costs upfront, you're located in one of New York City's five boroughs, you have at least 10 employees to train, you have to be a for-profit business in operation for at least one year, provide wage gains to your trainees post training and we'll go that we'll go into that a little later but that's 18 months kind of from the applet from the beginning from when you're awarded the grant and you do have to pay all trainees during training um, one what I mentioned that you need to have at least 10 trainees a trainee um, of those trainees, at least 50% of them have to be incumbent workers. And we define that as working with your company for at least six months. An employee that works for you must be 18 years or older, work in one of New York City's five boroughs, meet federal and state minimum wage standards and earns less than $38.10 an hour. So we're gonna now talk about what trainings can be offered. Trainings can be offered in one of two ways. Required trainings for this program have to either be in-person classroom or online training. 
That's required. You have to have some of those in the training plan. And when I say a training plan, when you submit your application, you talk about your challenges and then you say, hey, I have these challenges, but these courses can help me address these challenges. And these are the courses that I'm talking about. So there has to be classroom or online training. Then there also can be on the job training. And that is, you know, you have someone who's doing a job and someone is gonna shadow them. So depending, I can't get this away. Depending, oops, sorry about that. Depend, these are the costs that can be reimbursed. So for the classroom or online training, you can get, you will get reimbursed a portion of the training for internal or external instruction. You hire an outside company or someone from your um, company actually gives the course. Books, materials, and supplies that you need for this course. And if for some reason you have to rent an external space around books, you don't have space or the instructor, the, the provider, the educator is not um, offering a space. For on-the-job training, the only cost that is reimbursable is the trainee wages while that person is in training, shadowing the manager or shadowing someone, that those fees can also be reimbursed. You, uh, we cannot reimburse businesses for any training that's legally mandated. Training that doesn't offer a non-transferable skill. If, if you want to train your employees on something that's specific to your company, your company only, that cannot be reimbursed. And if you're also currently in training, we cannot reimburse for that yet. So how do you apply for a customized training grant? Um, businesses can apply, can apply as an individual business, but you just have to have at least 10 trainees or more. Um, 10 employees more to train, or if you don't have 10 employees or more, or you do, but there's another business that you want to partner up with, you can apply as a consortium. That just means that's more than one business applying together, but you still have to train at least 10 people. Um, and we contract with one of the businesses. Trainings are still customized to meet employees. So with the customized training grant, and I said this earlier, but it's really, it kind of drives the whole, I feel like the crux and like the, the best part about this program is train. If you have 10 employees, your employees can all take the same training. They can take some of the same trainings. They could all take different trainings. And the goal of the trainings are you as the business presented a challenge that you are facing and these trainings that you want to train your employees, the same or different trainings are going to help your business address the challenges. So when we say trainings are customized to meet employees needs, it doesn't matter if it's just an individual business or a consortium of businesses. And then when we do reimburse, SBS only reimburses to the lead business and the lead business does have to distribute, uh, distribute the reimbursements. So the application process, we try to make it as easy as one, two, three, four. There's a pre-application that's online that takes about 10 minutes. Then after, if you get through that process, there's an application. After that, your application gets evaluated. And if it gets approved to bring to our board, um, you receive the award notification. And I'll break down each of these steps. So the pre-application, as I mentioned, it's online. The presentation will have a link to it. If you're ineligible, we will contact you, let you know, clarify why you're ineligible and offer you and send you and share with you some other opportunities that the city can offer. If you are eligible, we will set up a screening call with you to talk more about your business and to talk about the grant. Part two is the application, and step two is the application, and it is in two parts. Part one of the application, and we email both of them to you. Part one is general information about your business, your location, your business challenges, why you need this grant, why you can't do it on your own, so on and so forth. Part two of the application is the actual training plan. It has the courses, the course providers, the trainees, name, uh, not names, the trainees titles and the budget. Step three is the application and evaluation and clarification. So once we've kind of gone through the application, we've worked with you with application assistance, we've asked you lots of questions, 
um, and we've determined that your application is in a good place, we bring it to the board. And the board, there's a board of directors, there's four meetings a year, they'll go through dates, but there's four meetings a year that our team brings customized training grant applications to be reviewed. When we get to this point, if your business is it put in front of the board, that means that we are your advocate. We are going to fight for you to get this grant because we've taken this process with you. We've walked step by step and we think that you're a really good fit. And then if you are awarded, we let you know that you're awarded. And then there's a whole process that we go through after that um, to get you contracted and to get you up and running. Um, so once you're awarded, the general process, it's about an 18 month process. You have a year to train. The first month, it takes about a month to execute the contract. You have 12 months for training. And then once training is completed, your business has up to six months to let us know how it went. And if you were able to actually give wage increases to the incumbent workers that you projected to give wage increases to. Um, I, well, I'm not gonna go so deep into this right now, but once the award is um, granted, you have to be prepared to submit trainees payroll. Um, you have to enter the, you or the, your trainees, your employees have to get entered into our database, which is called WorkSource One. Um, we do ask for workers comp and certificate of insurance. And we also go through your training plan one more time, just to make sure that it's exactly where you need it to be, that the trainings that you want to do are still in fact gonna help your business. These dates are um, the next two sets of deadlines. So our next board meeting is, you'll see December 6th. So the deadline for the pre-application you can see is October 15th, application assistance by October 29th, final application is November 11th. If you look in the box to the right, that is the next set of dates. So if you couldn't meet, if we couldn't get your application in and get you ready for the board meeting on December 6th of 2021, we can then support you and get you ready for the following board meeting, which is March 7th, 2022. I'm gonna take a pause here and see if anybody has any questions before I go on to how we actually calculate the award. Hey, Kathy, this is Michael. Um, I do not see anything in the Q&A or the chat. Um, if anybody has a question now, if you want to quickly enter one, if not, I believe we'll give it a couple of seconds, but then I don't see anything, Kathy. So if you want to continue, and then again, we will have a session at the end when you're done with the second part uh, to check questions and Q&A as well. So uh, from now, okay, Kathy, great. you're ready to go. Thanks, Michael. So we've talked about who qualifies for the grant. What is the grant? What do you need to do? What is the process? So now we're saying you, you, you were awarded a grant, but how did we calculate that award? So our grant is comprised into two parts. We've broken it down just to kind of ease, for ease of understanding. Part one is training costs. When I say training costs, Remember, the business has explained to us that they have these challenges. They're, they've also identified trainings that are going to support those challenges and help the business overcome them, thrive, stay competitive in New York City. So that's the training costs. Part two is what we call the closeout payment. And if you remember, I referred to the grant, you have about 18 months. It's a year of training and then up to six months after to submit um, wage increase information. The outcomes is what we call it. And that's part two. So I'm gonna start with part one. The, I'll give you the overview and then I'll get into each part. So the two parts of the customized training grant, you can see part one is training costs. We will reimburse your business for the training, and that will happen on a quarterly ba basis. So remember I said the award can range from 30,000 to $400,000. In terms of training costs, a business has to pay for the training upfront, but only as they do it. And then on a quarterly basis, they submit paperwork to us and we reimburse them a certain percentage. At the end of the grant, part two, 
they've done training, they have up to six months to share the wage increases. Then there's those other ways that we reimburse a business. Um, and the whole goal is this, is we wanna support the New York City businesses. And we also want the businesses to understand the value in training and how it can really help their business. So if this, you finish the grant, you see success, you either reapply for the grant or you continue to train your employees. So part one. Um, so there's training costs that we discussed before. It could be for the in, cl the in class or the on the job training. You have to have in class or online training, but we re you pay for it up front. But SBS will reimburse you a portion. So if your business has 125 or less employees, we will reimburse you 60% of the amount of money that you have paid for training. If your business has 126 or more employees, we will reimburse you 50% of that money. But just remember, it's on a quarterly basis. So here's an example of that. Let's just say, and this is the whole program, Let's say the total training costs equaled $100,000. And we're doing this based on a smaller business that has 100 employees. You've laid out not at one time, but over the course of the program, you've laid out $100,000. Since we are reimbursing you 60%, your business ultimately pays 40. We reimburse 60%. So you would get 60,000. But I did mention about the wage gains. So during every reimbursement, we actually withhold, I'll show you an example of this, but we withhold 20% of each reimbursement because for there, we are measuring that against how many people get wage gains. So in the beginning of your application, you will identify incumbent workers. Those are the workers that have been with you for six months or more. You will say of those incumbent workers, I am going to give every single one of them a wage gain. So your projection is I'm giving 100% of my incumbent workers wage gains. At the end of training, once it's done, you have six months, then you, you prove to us that you've given 100% of those incumbent worker wage gains. Well, then at that point, you will get that remaining 20%. In this case, it's $12,000 that we've withheld. I have a little, I have more of a tangible experience. Uh, example for you that you can see, but that just kind of gives you an example of you get reimbursed 60%, but we do withhold 20% of it. The thing that I want to highlight here is you don't lay out all the training at once. As you lay it out, you get reimbursed for it on a quarterly basis. And that happens the first part of the program while you're training. Then you've completed training, all the training is done. You've submitted your four quarterly reimbursements. You've gotten your 50 or 60% reimbursement minus the 20% that we withheld to check to see if you did give wage increases. But then there's other ways that we incentivize you to finish the training and to get all of your employees trained. So there's three parts of part two, wage gains, which I've talked about, a trainee completion credit, which is pretty exciting that we haven't talked about yet, and an administrative excuse me, an administration payment that we share with you um, for the, the, the administrative lift that you've done for this program. So part one, part two, part one of part two. <laughs> um, so the closeout, so the wage gains and outcomes payment. So as I've talked about during those four quarterly reimbursements, you get, you will receive 50 or 60% back. We withhold 20% to see if you're going to give wage increases. So example one and two are kind of lay this out. Let's say we withheld $12,000 from Q1 through Q4 reimbursements. You projected that 10 incumbent trainee received wage gains and you've actually given each of them a wage gain. We don't say you have to give them 1%, 2%, 10%, just whatever you've projected and we've agreed to in the beginning, that's kind of what you've done. Then at the end of the program, you will receive $12,000, additional $12,000 that was withheld from your training reimbursements. But let's just say for whatever reason, your own, you said you were going to, you projected 10 incumbents to receive 10 uh, wage gains, but you only gave five. So of that $12,000, we would only reimburse 6,000 of that back. And again, I'll go through all this, whether you have questions today, or you're interested and you have questions in the future, we are always available. So the second part of part two, and this is where things get really exciting, is it's called the trainee completion credit. 
So we haven't talked about it yet, but when you're submitting your application, you submit all of your trainees hours, your, your trainees are your employees, but the number of hours they're going to train and their hourly wage. So from that, each business receives a unique training completion credit, and it's formulated on the trainee wages and the trainee hours. And we consider completion of this program of 75% of what you projected your trainees to do. So if you, if just say in round numbers, you said, my employee is going to have 100 hours, and that employee completes 75 of those 100 hours, that's completion. So let's just say we your trainee completion credit is $1,500 per employee. And let's say you had 10 trainees complete, that's that 75% of the projected training, you would get $15,000. So you would not only get your outcomes with the wage gains, but you would get this $15,000 for um, the trainee completion credit. And remember, the, the, the trainee completion credit per trainee is different per business. So that could be $900 for you. That could be $2,400 for you. It depends on the trainee wages and the trainee hours. It's a weighted average. Um, and the last part of the closeout is an administrative payment. So there is some, as I've talked about, you can see this is, a, this is an in-depth program. Um, and what we have identified is that um, it does take some time from your administrative staff. Someone at your office or two people at your office is going to have to monitor and manage this program. For that, you receive 10% of the total training costs. Not that you paid, but of the total training costs. So remember in the example that I had given, we said that training was $100,000. Even though you were gonna get, re, you had the potential to get reimbursed $60,000, we're basing it on the $100,000. So 10% of 100,000 is $10,000. So again, at the, at the end of the program, you receive wage, whatever we've withheld for wage gains, whatever your trainee completion credit adds up to, and whatever your administrative fee adds up to. So in this example, if the training costs was $100,000, we would end up in this, in this scenario reimbursing the business at the end of the day, 85 of that $100,000. And to, again, not freak people out in terms of the, the layout of the training costs, here's an example. You laid out $60,000 and you got reimbursed, but maybe it was $12,000 in first quarter, maybe it was $18,000 in the second quarter, maybe it was $10,000 in the third quarter, and so on and so forth. So one of the eligibility factors for this program is that we say that you do have to be able to lay money out for training costs up front. Um, that is a mouthful, and I know that that's a lot to take in. Oftentimes, we share this with the business, they listen, they read the material, and they come back with questions. We are here for that. So if you have any questions today and or after the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce shares this information with you, my team at SBS is here to answer any of those questions and to see if this is the right program for you. And even if it's not the right program for you and you know another business owner, that this is available to, we plead, we just ask you to share it. We want to support the businesses of Staten Island and of the city. I'm gonna stop sharing my video in case anyone has any questions and we can go face to face. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, from the looks of it, it there are no questions, um, nothing in the chat. So just to recap, um, just similar exactly what Kathy said, this is being recorded. This will be shared out uh, by the chamber. So this will be out there for anyone. Like Kathy said, if you know anyone that would be you know, possible, especially for the grant program, if you know anyone that might be eligible, again, those numbers have changed. So maybe you know some people that weren't eligible before, now with the greater numbers they are. And if you know anyone that might be interested in Kathy and the SBS program, like we said, we're gonna share this out. My email address again, uh, it's M Anderson's Manderson at SIchamber.com. So if you have any questions with any of these, I can definitely get back to you. If you have a question with the SBS, you could email me. I can be in touch with Kathy and Kathy, you know, can send off any information. And again, like Kathy said, we're here to help every business. You do not have to be a Staten Island Chamber of Commerce member. 
to participate in any of these programs. We just work together to help every business on Staten Island. So as far as the grant and the training program that Kathy spoke about, you know, definitely share it with all your business contacts and let them know that we're here to help them and answer any questions. And I'm just going to take one quick check before we sign off. And I want to say thank you, Michael, and the Staten Island Chamber for allowing me to present this and get the word out to Staten Island businesses. Um, please spread the word. I, I, we just need this Staten Island businesses to know that these opportunities are out there for them, and we really want to work together Great. to help to build back stronger. We've known that like we need to work together to become stronger, healthier. Yeah, especially like, you know, we know everything that's going on now and, you know, employees are really vital to every business, especially the small businesses. We understand that a lot of businesses are hurting right now. So that's why we definitely want to make sure we can help them any way we can, even with the grant, even if it's, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars or if it's training, like you said, some um, job skills may be a little archaic and maybe a little outdated. So here's a way you can definitely update it and, and get yep. great workforce. So marketing, uh, e-commerce, anything, anything that can help your business get to the next level, or even if your business is doing well, but you still want to get to the next level and thrive in New York City. So I don't see anything else. So Kathy, again, thank you so much for thank you joining with us. And it looks like everyone is done. So again, if you have any questions, find us on the chamber, sichamber.com. I am Manderson at sichamber.com. Feel free to contact us at any time and we'll help you guys out. Uh, thank you for joining us and definitely keep an eye on the chamber. We have a lot of different webinars and programs coming up uh, to get all businesses involved and hopefully you know, help them during this pandemic. Okay, uh, goodbye everybody. Thank you for joining us.